Hello art classes. Over the last couple of days, we have been going over value and practicing making value with different techniques using cross hatching, hatching, scribbling, and other interesting types of lines to try to show light all the way to dark. The reason we've been practicing these is because we're about to have you actually drawing some shapes and then adding shading to them to try to make them look three-dimensional. In this example, I've drawn my shapes and I've used cross hatching to try to show directional lighting. The light's coming from this way, so the shadows are all on the opposite side. Cross hatching. Here's another example using hatching, so all the lines are just parallel with each other. And this example was using a scribbling technique. For your assignment today, you're going to be working with a worksheet that you can either print out from Schoology today or you can just draw this out on your own paper, which is what I'm actually going to do. Now, what we're doing for this assignment is you're going to be drawing three spheres, three cylinders, and then three cubes across your paper. One of these sets of spheres, cylinders, and cubes, we're gonna be shading by just blending with your pencil. And then another set, you will choose a shading technique to do for all three of those. And then the third set, you're gonna choose another shading technique to do the last three. So today, let's just focus on the blending ones. So just like our worksheet, I'm gonna put up at the top, blending. And we're going to be drawing spheres across and then cylinders and then cubes. So let's start by just drawing all of our shapes across. Feel free to draw out a grid first if you would like to, if that helps you to organize things so that you know how much space you have. It's like a giant tic-tac-toe here so that we end up with nine squares. All right, so our first row across is going to be spheres, so let's draw our circles. Now, your teachers might be going over how to draw these shapes in the Zoom meeting, or there could be a separate video about drawing these shapes, but in this video today, I'm just gonna try to go quickly so we don't end up with a 30 minute long video. All right, and there are my three circles. Great. Next, all the way across, we're going to make cylinders. Now a cylinder would be like this cup right here. So it's round along the side, it's a circle on the top and the bottom, and it's flat on the top and the bottom. Let's draw those circles for the top and bottom first. I'm gonna make ovals. So that's gonna be the top of my cylinder. And then I'll draw two vertical lines that go straight down from the edges of it. And then another oval for the bottom. I make it really lightly at first. And then the bottom part of the oval is the part that we'll actually keep and we'll get rid of the extra line in the middle of it. That's how I make the cylinder. All right, I've got all my spheres, got all my cylinders. The next three are going to be cubes. There are a couple different ways to draw a cube. I'm just gonna make the simple one where I start with a square or a rectangle. And then I draw three parallel lines coming off from the corners diagonally. And then the back of our cube has to be a right angle. So a horizontal line and then a vertical line that goes straight down, not out at an angle. And there we are. I've got my cylinders, my spheres, and my cubes down at the bottom. And now you are ready to start blending. When you're ready to start adding value to show that your shapes have a light shining on them and shadows on them, the first step is to figure out where is the light coming from. In this sheet right here, I've got some examples of different 
three-dimensional forms that have light shining on them from different directions. So this first column here, all of the light is shining from the left side onto the objects. So that means that there's a bright spot, a highlight on the left side, and then shadows on the right side. And then underneath, you can see a little cast shadow below each one that's going away from the light. This column shows light that seems like it's coming almost from right above. So the light is coming from this way. We've got a highlight on the top, shadows on the bottom, and then a little cast shadow below like this. The next row, the light seems to be coming from off to the right over here and shining this way. So our cast shadow is going off to the left and our highlight is on the right. And then our last row, the light is behind the object. So directional lighting. I am going to make all of the three-dimensional forms on my paper have light coming from the same direction, just to keep it easy. I'm gonna make the light coming from the top right corner for each of my shapes. So I'll even make a little arrow so that I don't forget. So blending technique, light coming from this side. So on my sphere, I am going to be making uh, blending and I'm going to make some lines here that'll show you how I'm going to organize my values on this sphere. So this part right here is gonna be the brightest spot, the highlight, it's closest to the light. And on the other side, this is gonna be the darkest spot. Because a sphere is round, that means that the light and the shadows actually wrap around the object so that you end up with shadows that are curved. So my shadowy side of my sphere is gonna be a big old curve and then it's slowly gonna get lighter as we get closer and closer toward this light. I am moving my pencil in little tiny circles. I'm not pressing very hard because I don't want you to end up being able to see my lines. So I'm pressing very lightly. I'm holding back pretty far on the pencil. Don't choke up on it like this or you're gonna have really dark lines. All right, so here is the shadowiest side of my sphere, you would say. It's kind of like a, an up backward C, sort of, and now I'm going to start making it get lighter and lighter as we go this direction, so I'm gonna be not pressing quite as hard. I'm gonna press lighter and lighter to make shadows that are lighter and lighter. You may notice that I have choked back on my pencil even further away from the end to help me make lighter and lighter lines here. So I'm, I'm technically using lines. They're just really, really light. And we're trying to get it to fade from dark to light. All right, so here I have some really light values, some slightly darker values, some slightly darker values, and then some dark values. But my dark values are not very dark. So my next step is gonna to be to go into the darkest side of this shape and really amp up the shadows to make them really nice and dark and rich. So I'm gonna add another layer. not pressing as hard so I can blend it in and fade it into the middle gray area. All right, and I'm gonna call it right there. From dark to light, wrapping around our sphere. Let's look at the cylinder next. So the cylinder, I'm gonna put some little guidelines in here as well. You'll notice that the guidelines that I put, those curved lines on our sphere, I've covered up because I made them super duper light. I'm gonna do the same thing with the cylinder. So if the light is coming from here, 
then this flat side is going to be mostly one value because it's flat. But the curved side is going to be darker on one side where it's further away from the light and it's going to fade to lighter as we get closer to the side that has more light shining on it. And so I'll probably have some light wrapping around on this side and probably mostly dark in this area. And then I'm going to wrap it around like this so that it's lighter on this side for sure because that's the closest side to our light. All right, so about the same as before with my sphere. We've got it darker here and slowly fading to light, but I don't have a really, really dark area. So I'm gonna go in and add some extra dark shadow to the darkest part of the curved part of my cylinder. So I'm pressing a little harder with my pencil. All right, I'm gonna leave it there for my curved sides of my cylinder. And let's talk about the top. The top is gonna to be one solid value. Now it looks like my light is coming from kind of above. So the top of my cylinder is not going to be super dark. It's gonna probably be pretty light. Now it might be a little bit darker on the left side, further away from the light but not a lot because it is flat. So that means that the light can travel across that flat surface and get pretty far before it starts to fade out. All right, there is my cylinder. Now, our cube or box. So the cube or box is different than the first two because there are no curves on it. All of these sides are flat. So the decision you have to make here with your box is which side has the most light touching it, which side has the least light touching it, and which side is going to be kind of in between. Now if the light is coming from over here, shining onto the box, this part over here that's close to us is probably going to be the darkest side. Similar to how the light on these objects, the left side is the darkest side. So I would almost say this was the darkest side, and I'll put a D in there, super lightly. And then if the light is above, I would say that the top might be the lightest side. So I put a really light L in there. And then the side here, that's my medium side, just because of where my light is coming from. So now when you start adding values, you won't have to fade so much from dark to light because each side will be a different value. There's my dark side. There's my lightest side. And there's my medium side. But if you notice, my darkest side and my medium side are really similar. And so I'm gonna go back in and make my darkest darks darker. This is something that I see happening with students a lot, is that your darkest part of your shadow tends to be not as dark as it could be. And so I'll probably make you go back in and add more darks to your shadows, just like I have been. Much better. Blending. 